infertility, condition most Christians suffer from. I myself, my wife had two children. We have a son, and we have a daughter. Both of them were absolutely planned pregnancy because my wife was infertile and we had to go to the doctor. She had to do measurements and time to have our son and then later our daughter. And we actually got to pick the dates they were born. That's a double miracle. And let me start off with Psalm 27, 127, 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now, don't go thinking that if you haven't had a child that God doesn't love you, God doesn't care. It's you will get pregnant or you will not get pregnant. Unfair for those unable while they want, the, the wife wants to get pregnant. And then there are some women who don't want a baby, and they may keep the baby, they may put the baby for adoption, or even abortion. They don't want a baby, and yet they in turn become pregnant. And there are couples out there, saved and lost, they desperately want a child, and some of them cry out, why, it's not fair, it doesn't make sense. And maybe even challenging the parents that do become pregnant. That's another fragment of judgment that comes forth. The expectation, and we can't explain. I mean, science today can determine if it's the male or it's the female or both of them. Science today can evaluate, intervene, as they've done with my wife for us. I mean, Jesus said, and I'm not going to quote the verse, they that are sick, don't need to need a physician. Those are whole need not a physician, but those that, that are sick, and I'm not quoting the verse completely right, forgive me. So if you or if you and your wife are un unable to have children, and your first desire is prayer, and it doesn't happen, and you pray, if you are able, see a doctor. At least find out. And if you are able, So, Psalms 113, verse 9, He maketh the barren woman, that's the woman who can't have a baby, to keep house, to be a joyful mother of children, praise ye the Lord. Now, maybe number one is, maybe you won't be a joyful mother. You may become a wicked mother. Now, all of motherhood and all of fatherhood is not a joy. Again, I know you may come across, what about the, that couple over there, about what they do to their child? There are things of the Lord we can't understand. There are things of God we cannot explain. But he maketh the barren woman to keep house, to be a joyful mother. To he, God, God is the source. God is the creator, not the doctors. Not the, I mean, if you go to the doctors and you go to the medicines, you, and you, you go to the temperature, and you go to the date and all that, it's not that. It is God. It is God that makes a fruitful womb. And we go to Judges. Judges. 13. Verse 33. That's kind of hard. Judges 13. Let's try 23. Thirteen. Judges thirteen three. Error there. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, thou art barren, unable to bear a child, and bearest not. See, gives the definition. But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now, don't go looking for an angel come to your door 
Don't look for an angel to come to the workplace. We're in the Old Testament. We're dealing with Israel. God took a barren woman. This is Samson's mother. She was barren. And the prayers. They were heard. And they were answered. They didn't have the doctors and science. It was Jehovah God. Luke 1. Luke 1, verse 25. This is Mary. Thus has the Lord dwelt with, dealt with me in the days where he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. You know, it was a point for Jewish women. And we'll see that in a, in a moment. That they're married and they don't have a wife. I mean, excuse me. They have a wife, and they don't have a child. That was very look upon, frowning, and disgust. Mary, you know, end up having Jesus. Genesis 30. Genesis 30. Verse 22, Rachel, this is about Rachel, 30, 22, Rachel was barren. God remembered Rachel, God hearkened to her, she's been praying, she's been speaking, she's been seeking God. And open her womb and she can see and bear a son. So God opened her womb, had an egg release, and that egg conceived. God did it. After Rachel talked, after Rachel prayed, after Rachel cried, after Rachel had frustrations with her sister. God gave the baby. Same book, Genesis 16, 11. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard thy affliction. And that's Hagar. That's Sarah's maid. She'd been afflicted by Sarai. God heard her. God saw her in tears. And God told her. She's going to have a baby. Genesis 29. Genesis 29, 32. Leah conceived and bared a son. She called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Leah was under conviction. Leah was under affliction. She was afraid that her husband did not love her. That Reuben would be the child that would bring her and her husband together. There was a lot of tears. Psalm speaks about by David. 
put my tears in a bottle. There are plenty of tears found in the Bible. Psalms. Psalm 62, 1. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. Verse 5. My soul wait thou only on God, for my expectation, expectation is from him. Verse 8. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is the refuge for us, Selah. God, God, God. God is to be first. God is not to be blamed. God is not to be hated. God is to be sought for. God is to be the one you bring your tears to. Is this going to do it? I don't know. I'm not praying for a baby right now, but I'm praying for one thing. Is God able to answer the prayer? Yes. <coughs> Will he answer the prayer? Will he answer the prayer with yes? I don't know. You see, God will answer your prayer with yes. No. Not now. That's the only three things that God will answer our prayers. Ruth. Small book called Ruth. Verse four, chapter 4, verse 13. Chapter 4, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth. She was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception. She bare a son. Who gave her conception? Boaz? No. The priest? No. The Lord. The Lord God gave her conception. God is the author of a conception. Like you say, well, what about these people that have conception and they go and abort the baby? Woe be unto them. They have taken something of God, whether they believe in God or not, and they've killed it. They have taken a life that comes from God where other women pray, they want the desire and don't have and die childless. They've taken a baby, they murdered that baby. Oh, they're in great big trouble. Both the mother, the father, the nurses, and the doctors of abortion. You are in great trouble, my friend. Job 10. Job 10, 10. Hast thou not poured out me like milk? And curdle me like cheese? That's not it. Uh -oh. Well, that may be. But look at verse 11. Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and hast fenced me with bone and sinew. Who's like? You say, you know, I was born, not me, but I'm just saying, I was born with one arm. I was born lame, with no legs. I was born with a defective heart. That's God. That's God. And that takes prayers between you 
and God. Your pastor won't be able to answer you. He can't. Now, he may comfort you with the scriptures. Don't know what God's doing in your life. But make it fruitful for him. Genesis 25. Genesis 25, 21. And Isaac entreated, sought, prayed, earnestly dealt with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Rebekah was barren. Isaac went into a prayer closet. Isaac went and talked with God. Isaac's doing his work. He said, Lord, I'd like to have a baby. Isaac is feeding the candles. Lord, we don't have a baby. Lord, God, she, she's not able to give birth. Lord, what can we do? Lord, God, help us. Lord, he's seeking out the God of creation, the Jehovah, the I Am. And God answered. If you're unable to, to, to be pregnant, go to God. If your wife is unable to be, get pregnant, go to God. Somebody in your church want, wants a baby and they can't, go to God. And pray. And earnestly pray. Because Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30, verse number 15, Proverbs 30, verse 15, At the end of verse 15, yea, four things say not, it's enough. The grave, graves always, you ever notice a graveyard never fills up? They keep putting bodies in, they keep putting bodies in it, and the barren womb. There are barren wounds all over the world. Past, present, and the future. And they want to be filled. They want a light. They want the baby boy. They want the baby girl. It doesn't happen. And there, there are there are people out there. Oh, they shouldn't have had a baby. And that's not us to decide, First Samuel. First Samuel 1, 16. Why did God give them a baby? I don't know. I've thought of that sometimes. I thought of it. First Samuel 1 16 and her adversary also provoked her sore Hannah for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. Who shut up her womb? Who shut Hannah's womb? The Lord did. The Lord shut up her womb. And it's sad. It's very sad. And Panu is making fun of her. Verse 7, And as he did so year to year, she went up to the house of the Lord, Jerusalem, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. That's not healthy. That's not help you at all. Verse 8. Then Elkiah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? She's not pregnant. She doesn't have a son or a daughter. Why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than the ten sons? Then 
Verse 10, she was also in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. That's how bad Hannah wanted her son. You may want a son that bad. And it's hard. It's very hard. You're not to pass judgment on them. Listen to him, pray for him. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Genesis 29, 31. You know? It is God. Could also be the devil. With permission of God. Genesis 20, 18. The Lord had fast closed up all the wounds. Twenty nine thirty one of Genesis. When the Lord saw Leah was hated. He opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Genesis thirty twenty two, 22, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And it was a blessing of the children of Israel. Genesis forty nine twenty five, even by God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, that's God, who shall bless thee with the blessings of the heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. That was a blessing. May you be fruitful in children. May your breast have the milk made for the children. And there are times, there are people who are unable. They don't need your bad mouth. They don't need your insult. They don't need, they need prayer. They need someone to listen to them. They need care. They don't need your opinion. And it comes down to one only source. God the Creator. And in your prayers, pray, say, Lord God, bless them with the baby and the ability to raise that baby. For you, Lord. 